Uh, here in Canton, Ohio. Dave Pye and Mike Tyson with you, and we'll be with you every Wednesday night on Kalamazoo Channel 5 as we broadcast every single Kalamazoo Kangaroo home game and, of course, some of the away games as well. Our second game on the road, Mike. This should be a good one, Dave. We've got the only two undefeated teams in the league as of right now going at it. The young Kalamazoo Roos against the experienced, high-powered Canton Invaders. David should be a good one. You don't normally expect it in your second game. You're already going for a battle for the lead, but that's the way we have it here. Dave Pierce and Teddy Powers, and away come the Invaders. Early chance. Frick takes it round and right across the goal. And goodness me, Killingsworth was in there as well. Teddy Powers trying to get it back to his goalkeeper, Victor Petroni. Shot comes in. Good save from Petroni. Chance now and a goal. What a start from the Invaders. The Kalamazoo Kangaroos never got the ball across the Canton Invader red line. 21 seconds and number eight, Art Kramer, the MVP for the Invaders last year, puts the ball past Victor Petroni and the defense just couldn't get it away, Mike. Well, Ken Killingsworth and Art Kramer both brought the ball down right on Victor. He was helpless from the start. Well, the Roos are going to try and get one back quite quickly now. Jamie Swanee in goal. Well, the Canton Invaders tonight. Ted Powers, Mike Gowd, Dave Pierce, Tony Wicker, Mark Christensen, Victor Petroni on the field for the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. Large crowd here this evening for the home opener for the Invaders. Pisano, Pisano, good play. Gets it back and right up and on the far post are Kramer again. As the Ruse will make a change. Ruse look like they're suffering from a little bus lag, Dave. Journey down here. Six hours from Kalamazoo. Well, that's the type of start the home fans want to see, Mike. Yeah, being their home opener, you know the crowd's pumped. It looks like they've got a good 3,500 here tonight, and every one of them, every one of those seats is filled, except for some of the $8 ones, of course, which I'd even have trouble buying. Here's Keir, he's got a breakthrough, and a chance now, and a shot wide, and the Kalamazoo Kangaroos slipping up on defense. Keir, number 19, very quickly in there for the Canton Invaders. And the Roos have got to settle down, Mike. Less than a, just over a minute into this game, the Roos are down by one. They look a little unorganized, Dave. Here comes Mike Gibbons, Sanderson. Gibbons again, cross the red line. He's going to bring it forward. Gets it off to Sanderson just a little bit too far. Kevin Flynn is back. He's going to use Victor Petroni. Petroni off to Gibbons. And Gibbons taken down by Timo. Timo will bring it forward for the Invaders. Out on the far side. Back across this side, number five. Watch Lottow, the new signing from Columbus. And the invaders slip on, up on that pass. Here's O'Shea. Does a good job controlling the play. Gets it across to Gibbons. Gibbons leaves it out for Ridgeway. But Ridgeway, the bounce off the wall, beats him that time. Here's Tima, Tim Tima. Sanderson will chase for that one with Kia. And Kia wins that chase. Center field, the invaders with the ball. Two minutes into the game. Out on the far side, shot comes in and right across the face of the goal. And my word, that was close again. Number six, Ken Lolo in there. Here's Kia. O'Shea takes him wide and gets the shot. Tima back at center field. The Ruse trying to settle down. Ken Lolo. Terry Campbell, the head referee this evening here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. And Dave, that's our first foul of the game with the new sixth foul rule. We have to keep count of those. Sixth foul, and that is a two-minute penalty against the Roos. Here they go again, Nick O'Shea. And he'll bring it forward for Kalamazoo. Leaves it off. Number eight, defensive counterpart, Kevin Flynn. Flynn, his pass off the boards to Sanderson. Not quite strong enough. Don Tobin trying to control the play. Kramer. Oscar Pisano. Canton just prepared to play it around a little bit. Here's Pisano now. Right on the inside, he's got number four, Ken Killingsworth. Here's Killingsworth inside, tried to play the one-two, and O'Shea gets it back. Kramer just couldn't play that one-two the way he wanted it to play. Off the boards and over to Neil Ridgway, challenged by Tobin. Two English-born players. 
and Tobin does well, gets it off to Killingsworth. Invaders on the attack. Killingsworth across the red line, trying to get the shot in. Teddy Powers back to cover, and Victor Petroni will hold the ball up as the Roos make a line change. Three minutes into the game, Mike, the Roos are down by one. Well, the Roos have settled down. I think Chris is happy they're only down one after that first two minutes of blitzkrieg. Mike Goward inside to Dave Pierce. And back to Goward again, off the foot of number two, John Dolinsky. Goward with the ball, plays it in. And Jamie Swanner didn't know what hit him with that one. It's going to go back to the red line. Jamie Swanner can be had. He's a rookie in this league. Came out of Clemson University. This is just his second professional game. Mike Goward on the red line. Christensen, Wicker. Dave Pierce and Teddy Powers gets it inside to Powers, back to Wicker, to Garrett, and broken up by Oscar Pisano. He plays it down the line. Christensen's going to get this one and play it back to Victor Petroni. Petroni, Tony Wicker, clear in space, just overthrows it. We're going to get a foul called against Oscar Pisano. Dave Pierce will try and set something up here for the Roos to equalize. Four minutes into the first period, 1-0, the Invaders lead. Pierce, his powers. And a good job done by John Dolinsky, and then again by Wicker. Wicker again. And Swano will collect that from Killingsworth, distributed quickly down to Art Kramer. Christensen. Kramer goes down, Christensen goes down, and... Good play by Mark Christensen. Here's Wicker. Ruse on the overlap, plays it out to Dave Pierce. And again, the bounce beating the Ruse. Kramer's going to let fly. And his shot just hitting the Kalamazoo defender. This is a solid Canton team, no doubt about it, Dave. The Ruse can't expect them to make the mistakes. Kalamazoo has got to attack. The Roos seem, as Mike said, to have settled down. And almost though then they were... Dave Pierce goes down, almost let in then. Dave Pierce stayed down for a few seconds long. A good block by Powers. Mike Gower, Teddy Powers will try and get this one. And Canton out hustling the Roos at the moment. Here's Mike Gower, Dave Pierce on the run. Gower takes it forward. And no one to pass it to, no one in space for the Ruse, and Gout still with the ball. P Wicker to Christensen. Gout calling for the ball in space. Mike Gout looking for the shots, and Swanner makes the save. I think that flurry right there showed Dave. Mike Garrett's knee is healthy from last year. The Ruse need to build, get a few shots on, build their confidence up, Mike. Ball played into Tony Wicker. Christensen. Christensen to Garrett, and Garrett will use Petroni at the back. Petroni quickly off to Mike Gibbons. Gibbons battling with Tima, and Tima beats him and will bring it forward for Canton Invaders. Tima will have to go all the way to Kia. Kia's shot is blocked, and Christensen will bring it forward. The Roos on the attack, end-to-end -end action here at the Civic Centre in Canton, but Christensen's pass a poor one, and Sanderson cuts off the pass to the goalkeeper. Tima. Canton looking good at the moment. The Roos just trying to get the composure. The early goal, a definite blow to Chris Bartel's team, but they're now trying to come back. Here's Sanderson. Sanderson's got to hold up the play. Look for support. Kevin Flynn. Flynn goes in and goes down. Free kick to the Roos. That's Canton's second foul, Dave, and that could be a factor as this game wears on, as you well know. As you said earlier on, Mike, six fouls and you're going for two minutes. The new rule came from the MISL. Neil Ridgway, captain of the Roos. Back to Kevin Flynn. Flynn's shot. Off to Ridgway. And Ridgway just can't get the header in. And here come the invaders. Good play by Gibbons. He wasn't going to be let go by that fake. Watch Slot out. Couldn't fake out Mike Gibbons there. Gibbons trying to get into a shooting position. Loses the ball out to Kia. The Roos are not getting the shots off as they might do, Mike, but they're OK at the moment. O'Shea, good play. Neil Ridgeway and acres of space. Off goes Kevin Flynn, across the red line. He's going to use Sanderson to Gibbons. 
Gibbons tried to tip that one in. Good save from Jamie Swanner. Kalamazoo's starting to carry the play, Dave, and I know Chris is happy about that. He wants to give his defense as much rest as possible. Nick O'Shea is back. If Ridgeway needs someone to blast one shot from midway between the penalty area and the red line. O'Shea gets you right inside and the chance. Oh, and Derek Sanderson so close. Jamie Swallow makes the save, but what an intelligent play by Neil Ridgeway. Almost 1-1. John Tobin for the Invaders. Back to goalkeeper Jamie Swanner. Halfway through the first period here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. The Invaders won. The Roos nothing. Good interception by O'Shea. Sanderson hustling. O'Shea's going to win the ball. And we're going to get a free kick called against the Roos. Flynn on the far side with Art Kramer. Good play by Petroni. Ridgeway gets it off to Flynn. Flynn to Gibbons. And Gibbons tries to get it down the line to Derek Sanderson. Intercepted by Pisano. Pisano overruns two tackles. Gets his shot back off. And Petroni makes a good save off the boards. He has to hold it up. Can't get the quick distribution off to Ridgeway. O'Shea, centre of the field. Derek Sanderson. He's got space. Can he take on his man? Yes, he can. Gets his shot in. Only goes as far as Swana makes an easy save and Kramer will bring it forward for the Invaders. On the overlap, John Dolinsky for Canton. And O'Shea back to cover the shot from Dolinsky. Red line, it's Art Kramer for the Invaders. Back again to Dolinsky. Dolinsky tries to play forward, but Petroni will get that one and the Ruse will make a quick line change. Dave Pierce. Here's Pierce, nice ball out to Powers. Powers trying to turn the defense, gets a shot in, it's blocked by Dolinsky. And Powers battling out with Artie Kramer. Canton trying to make that line change as well. 5.52 remaining in the first period. 1-0, the Invaders leading. Schrader. Christensen trying to get the ball away. It's Dave Pierce. Right across the goal, Tony Wicker. Nice play out to Powers. LaRue's trying to set things in motion quickly. Teddy Powers got Mike Garrett clear. Good ball by Powers. Here's Garrett. But he doesn't get his pass off in time, and the invaders will come away with it. Here's Kia. Getting a little rough out there, Dave. Well, the players, certainly both teams now have settled down into this game. I think Chris Bartel's happy with the way his team's playing. Here's Ian Anderson, the new signing from the various MISL clubs he's played for. Five clubs before coming down here to the AISA. And very impressive stats in the MISL. Anderson scored 134 goals in his seven-year career. That's a lot in any league. Adds a lot of experience to a team which is not short on experience anyway there, Mike. His pass to Pierce. Pierce just fluffs the ball but gets it back again. It's clear forward and the invaders trying to get it away. His pass. Good play by Tim Tima to take it off the foot of Ted Pass. They almost caught Swanner out of position there. We haven't talked too much about the goaltenders tonight, but Swanner is filling in for Mike Barbrick, who was the all AISA goaltender last year. Barbrick's right now holding out in a contract dispute. Ball stays in. His team are battling with Wicker in the corner. Tries to use Anderson, but he'll come out to Wicker again. Tony Wicker brought down from behind. Free kick to the ruse. And I know Scott Bovenkirk, the PA announcer at Wing Stadium, can't wait to see the free kick to the ruse. I think a lot of people are looking forward to the opener at Wing Stadium. We have another official's timeout in Chicago. We had a lot of official timeouts after the goal was scored. Can't be a TV timeout. Can't be a TV timeout. We're the only TV. There can't be a radio timeout because they just don't have them. <laughs> and I know our newspapers don't stop for this. Well, head referee Terry Campbell wants a drink, so we're going to have an official timeout. 
Well, the official time at must be a new rule introduced for the AISA this year, Mike. Oh, water break. 3.55 remaining in the first period here at Canton. The Invaders leading 1 0. A crowd of around about 3,000 here to witness this game. Recap of the scoring. Our Kramer from, uh, from Oscar Bizzano just 21 seconds into the game, and that's all the scoring we've had with 3.55 to go in the first quarter. Ruse slowly getting their game together, slowly coming back into this game after that early setback. Victor Petroni with the ball in goal. Here he goes. Petroni will only come forward when he thinks it's safe. For those of you watching the Chicago game, you'll see Victor Petroni coming forward. Gibbons uses O'Shea. Kevin Flynn trying to go on the run forward. Come back to Gibbons. O'Shea. LaRue's trying to build it up. Sanderson taken down, but he'll play on. O'Shea plays it inside, but blocked by Killingsworth. O'Shea wins it back to Kevin Flynn. Victor plays it in. Petroni determined to make something happen on offense. Nick O'Shea calling for the ball. O'Shea gets it, lets it run. It's going to come back to Swanner. Right across the goal and almost Ridgeway almost in there. Dangerous mistake. Going to come back to Sanderson. Referee calls a foul. Three fouls to two. Kalamazoo having the three fouls. 2.52 remaining. In this first period here at Canton, Dave Pye and Mike Price, I'm with you. Here's Kramer. Kramer inside to John Tobin. Good play by Neil Ridgway. Neil showing a little defense there. The ball played out. Two twenty-six in the first period. It's fair to say that after that early setback, I think Mike, the Kalamazoo have certainly settled down a little bit more. Oh, these teams look dead even again. Uh, just like in the last year's playoff series, sure we got beat three games to one, but we were only outscored twenty-three to nineteen. That's not a whole lot in a four-game series. You're certainly right there, Mike. And of course, it was two overtimes, as we said in the highlights to the opening of this game. Kalamazoo really did give Canton a fright of their lives. Pierce trying to get in on the backside there of number five, Rod Schlotthauer. And here comes Schlotthauer coming forward. Tries a shot. Good save. And away comes Ted Powers. Tima. Plays it inside. Lolo with the shot. It's going to come back to Kia. Good save again by Petroni. Kia allowed to get that shot in. Try to flick it up and over the top of Petroni. Once again, he was in the right place there. Tony Wicker. We'll bring this ball forward. Right there's no, a well, big difference in it. A, sorry, Dave. That's right there's a big difference in this year's team from last year's team. Victor Petroni. That was a definite mistake in the defensive end. Kia, any other goaltender, that might have been a goal. Petroni showing his experience there. Anderson on the break. Petroni's coming out. Right across the goal from Anderson. And my word, was that close for the ruse. That had net written all over it. Probably why it was so difficult to stop. Ruse living dangerously at the moment. Christensen, Garrett. Ruse would like a goal before they go in. Less than a minute to go. The end of the first to the end of the first period. Powers is going to go wide. No one back to support Mike Garrett. Gets it off the boards. Dave Pierce not inside, and away come the invaders. 43 seconds remaining in this first half. The obvious key here is not to give up the cheap goal in the last half minute of play. Well, we're looking at the two best defenses in the league at the moment. It seems only played one goal, but only Victor Petroni's only conceded three goals, and Jamie Swanner conceded five. Here's Victor Petroni again. He's out of his goal. Powell's to try and get things in motion. Tima. Tima goes through on the far side. Kia, oh, they hit the post. How on earth did Kia miss that one? 
the loose play again. Well, Christensen did get back to help Victor out on that play. Here's Kia again. Surely it was easier to score, Mike. That's the end of the first period, and the Roos would be glad to see the back of that. Boy, that not a moment too soon, Dave. That buzzer's really a welcome sight. The Canton Invaders won. The Kalamazoo Kangaroos nothing here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. AISA action on Kalamazoo Channel 5. Second period of AISA action just about to get underway. Kalamazoo down by one goal to the regular season champions, the Canton Invaders. Another close one, Mike. Oh, yeah, unofficial shots in the first quarter. Canton nine, Kalamazoo five. Kalamazoo's got to get more than five shots a quarter if they're going to contend today. Well, here comes Nick O'Shea. O'Shea tries to play it into Ridgeway. O'Shea's going to get that one back. Takes on Don Tobin, wins the ball. Here's O'Shea. Which way calling for it? O'Shea plays it into Gibbons. O'Shea again off the board. Here's Tobin. And he gets it back to Jamie Swanner. Between the sticks tonight for the Canton Invaders. Pisano. Pisano into number four, Kenny Killingsworth. Joe Schmidt wins the tackle. And again, good play by Joe Schmidt. It's going to come back to. Nick O'Shea. O'Shea plays it. Good pass off to Gibbons. Ridgeway inside on the blind side of Pisano. We're going to get a free kick to the Roos. Ridgeway back to Joe Schmidt. Schmidt shot inside. Here's Gibbons. Back to Schmidt again. He plays it in. Ridgeway can he get on the end of this one? Deflected wide. And the invaders have come away with it. Well, it survived the 21 seconds, Mike. Yeah, I think that might have been the best rush of the Ruse offensively. Here they come again, Dave. O'Shea holding back. Looking for support. Gibbons provides that support. Near Ridgeway running in. But once again, they've got to get it back to Nick O'Shea. Kevin Flynn. Ruse doing a lot of running in this early part of this second period, isn't it, Mike. I think they're getting their legs back, too. The bus ride was obviously a long one. They were just got off the bus about 45 minutes before game time. I think they're back right now. It should be a good second quarter for us. And, and, and we're trying to be totally partisan over here, aren't we, Mike? Well, you know, Dave. I was on a long trip, too. Well, that's right. Hey, we can say us. That's fine. <laughs> we're from Kalamazoo. John Dolinsky, well, he's going to get the Tony Johnson Awards for... I think Joe Schmidt's going off, and that is... And if he is, Dave, that's his first action of the season, and he's going off for our, with our first two-minute penalty of the season as well. Well, that's a really uh, very harsh call by the referee. We're going to... The Roos are going to be faced a power play against them. Well, we mentioned it earlier on, Mike, but I think John Dolinsky could get the Tony Johnson Award for acting there. Smashed against the boards. He looked as if he'd just been stabbed in the back. Well, he was hit nonetheless, Dave, and the ref did call it. I don't know, the Tony Johnson Award. Uh, we'll have to keep that one in Tony's corner. What he's saying is there's no one like Tony Johnson. Well, I, I wouldn't. Well, Mike Garrett, I guess, is a good runner-up, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if Mike would admit to that. Of course, so those of you who come out to Wing Stadium to see the Kalamazoo Kangaroos play all our home games out there, 20 regular season games, you'll see Tony Johnson from Columbus come out a few times. Anderson takes the shot, good block by Wicker. Keir Zarganian all the way in the penalty area, just waiting and trying to block the shot from Ridgeway. Anderson, Tobin. Gets it through right inside and Keir misses the third. Third chance he's had this evening and he's missed it and the Roos are living dangerously. I don't want to jinx him, Dave, but the Roos have not given up a power play goal yet this year. Here's Anderson. Back to Tobin. Tobin gets his pass off. Schlotter back to Tobin again. Minute 14 on the power play. Tobin trying to get his shot in. Petroni makes the save, and Nick O'Shea, what a good play by Nick O'Shea. Got to give Nick all the credit in the world on that one. That ball got by, Victor. Ball's going to go up and over the top. Petroni out of goal. It's Pisano, blocked by Mike Gibbons. 
And Wicker again pushing Pisano back. 44 seconds remaining on the power play. Tobin gets it off on the far side. Slot out with a shot and straight through the legs of Victor Petroni. Oh, well, Slothar beat him clean, Dave. It was a clean beat. It's 2-0 the Invaders. This is exactly what you didn't want to happen. You don't want the Ruse going down 2 to nothing in Canton, especially with this big opening night crowd. The crowd is somewhere between 2,800 and 3,100 is our guess. Seating capacity here at the Civic Center, 3,000. 470. Ruse down by two. Paul Cato making his first appearance this evening for the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. 11 minutes 38 seconds remaining in this first half. Both teams back to full strength. Of course, the power play killed. Cato's pass intercepted. Another mistake by the young defense. Kier tries to take on Cato, gets it back again. And Dave Pierce puts it over. We're going to get a kick into the Invaders. Well, Chris has got to count on his defense again here. They're down deep in the Kalamazoo territory. Good save from Petroni. And Schlotow are looking for his second goal. Petroni denies him. Down to Paul Cato. Can the Ruse make anything of this? Cato plays it inside. Powers! And Pierce hits the post. What a chance for the Ruse. And away comes Ian Anderson on the break for the Invaders. Anderson plays it inside. Blocked by Christensen. Nice play by Cato out to Powers. Powers to Garrett. The Ruse looking for the first goal of the game. They're down by two. Ten minutes. 35 seconds left, Garrett shot, comes back to him. Here's Pierce, Garrett. Pierce again, he just runs into a wall of players. Christian Sun, great shot! Oh my word, what a powerhouse. Handball by the goalkeeper, Jamie Swan, and the referee to raise play on. Mike Garrett, with the shot, Powers, can he get in? Handball by Walt Schlotter, referee. Says play on again. That's two they've missed in a row. Well, and away defense, comes Tima. In defense of the ref, he was screened on that play. And a free kick is going to be given to the Invaders. Well, they've got the crowd on their side. And Terry Campbell's given another two-minute penalty. This time to Dave Pierce. Well, I tell you, they've got the crowd on their side, and I don't like to say it, Mike, but that was a terrible call. Unless, of course, Dave Pierce said something to the referee, and then, of course, you can't do that. Ah, oh, Dave's a nice guy. He would never say anything to a referee. Well, Dave Pierce wants to know what that's for. Chris Bartels, of course, very upset with that. I can sense a little frustration in the ruse now, too. And I know it's early, Dave. We're only in the middle of the second quarter, but they've had two golden opportunities, just shots just wide. They're down 2 nothing, and they're a man down. This could be a long well, second quarter. Neil Ridgeway, the captain of the Kalamazoo Kangaroos, he wants to know why that was called. But certainly, you know, you take it back and you say that the two referees were screened on the play early on, but it was a definite handball by Jamie Swan and there's no way they could have missed that. It comes back again and Slothauer, once again, they may have been screened. And um, again, the handball overlooked. I think that's where the frustration came in, Mike. But the players felt it wasn't called. So we're well, going to get a two minute penalty though, Mike. Can't, can't know the home team, you've got to keep your head on the road. Chris, Chris Bartels will be the first one to tell you he's got to keep his team under control. If they, if they lose it here, it could be, a, like I said, again, a long night. We've got to make it clear that the Hanson Invaders have also been given a two-minute penalty. Both teams will be at equal strength. Didn't see who went in. It's Tim right, Teamer Tim went Tima. in the penalty box for the Invaders. So 9.59 remaining in this first half. Both teams at equal strength for field players. The score, 2-0 to the Invaders. Chris going with the defensive lineup here. He's only got one attacker, Neil Ridgway. Well, whether Chris Bartos is going to play a defensive four on four. Here's Tobin. I beg your pardon, it's Kia. Kia tries to get past Flynn. 
comes into Dolinsky. His shots. Kramer blocked by Joe Smith. Good play by Joe Smith. And he comes away with it. Here's Dolinsky. O'Shea. He's brought down but intercepted. Here comes Neil Ridgeway. O'Shea running for support. Ridgeway gets it off to O'Shea just a little bit too far in front of him. And O'Shea loses out to Art Kramer. And away come the Canton Invaders. I had a feeling Neil Ridgeway might have taken a shot on that one there. Kramer with a shot. Good save by Petroni. Joe Smith looking solid on defense. His first time out, he came into the two-minute pelt, and he's coming back strong. Uh, there's talk on the ruse. He may be their best defender this year. I tell you something. The goalkeeper, Jamie Swanner, does not look that secure. So a few shots on him won't do the ruse any harm at all. And Kevin Flynn gets knocked in the eye. Oscar Pisano screaming for his players to come on as they come forward. Thirty seconds left in the penalty, Dave. I think Dave, Chris Bartels will be happy to come away with this, and it's still a 2-0 deficit. The Roos desperately needing a goal before they go in at halftime. Three on the far side. Number six for the Invaders is Ken Lala. Lala tries to get past Flynn. And a combination of Kevin Flynn and Neil Ridgway wins the ball back for the Roos, and then they lose it straight away again. Inside, Ken Lala. Trying to take on Joe Schmidt and Joe Schmidt forcing him back. Good play by the Ruse defenseman. Penalty time, both teams back to full strength. Seven minutes, 53 seconds remaining in the first half. The Invaders up by two. Ian Anderson. Anderson outside to Tima. Tima's shot right across the face of the goal. And Ken Lala couldn't get in on the end of that one. Anderson forced back by Dave Pierce. Walsh Slotow providing the cover. Inside his Kia. Can he get his shot in? Punched away by Petroni. Good play. Here comes Neil Ridgeway. He's got Pierce running down. Teamer chasing after him. Comes to O'Shea. O'Shea right across. Here's Ridgeway. He scores. What a nice goal. Neil Ridgeway makes it 2 1, and the Roos are back in it. Got to give all the credit to Nick O'Shea in that goal. He was dog tired down this right wing. I know he wanted a shift change. Ball came away. He had no chance. He had to go with the flow. Sent the ball in, and Ridgeway finished. And that's Ridgeway's trademark, the finish. Neil Ridgeway gets his first goal of the season to add to the assist he got against Chicago. And the Roos now back at 2 1, 7 17 to go until the half. And Trevor Dawkins calling a timeout for the Invaders. What a nice shot from Neil Ridgeway, straight powerhouse. And as you said, Mike, good play by Nick O'Shea to get it back past Swanner. I was saying earlier on, a few shots on Jamie Swanner. He looks a lot, he looks very suspect back there. Again, we can't stress it enough. It's just his second indoor game after a, ster a sterling career at Clemson University, a real big national power in the soccer annuals. But uh, he can be had indoors, and I think the Roos are going to start taking advantage of his inexperience. And that's what the Roos needed. They couldn't afford to be any more down, and they certainly couldn't afford to go in without having scored a goal. This should build up some confidence. And Ridgeway so deadly accurate from that distance, Mike. Oh, you give Ridgeway an opening, he's going to capitalize for you. He's probably the best player in the league at capitalizing. 7-17 Seven, remaining. The Roos 1-0, the Invaders 1-0. Another reason that's a good goal for Ridgeway. It's his first goal of the year. I know he's a marked man this year, being the second coming off of last year's second leading score in the league. Teams are marking him a lot closer this year. He knows that already. Well, of course, we always say the most dangerous time to concede a goal is just after you've scored one because you're at your well, it won't say it's your weakest, but there's a lot of confidence. Well, we got a fresh line out there, Dave. Let's see what happens. You know, Mike, I don't know what quite point I was trying to make on that last one there. But that's what they always say anyway, whoever they are. Well, Mike, Garrett, Mike Garrett with a foul there. I don't know what he was seeing. It was clearly a foul, Mike. Ken Livingstone goes down. I beg your pardon, Ken Killingsworth. Six fifty-six remaining in the half. Canton two, the Kalamazoo Kangaroos one. Pisano's going to try a long shot, and you don't beat Victor Petroni that way. Well, Victor Petroni's distribution is rather unusual. Nobody back there for the Roos. I think he was hoping for somebody to run forward to come to the ball. 
Yeah, I watched Victor after he got rid of that ball, and he was expecting a rush after that. He looked around like, hey, what's going on here? Tony Wicker. Back to Petroni. Petroni back to Wicker again. Oh, Wicker intercepted. Now's a chance. Oh, Victor Petroni covered the ball so well, and here, here we go. Victor. He's coming forward, plays it off to Mike Garrett. Uses the extra man on the far side, Dave Pierce. Pierce back to Christensen with a shot. Here's Powers. Powers back to Christensen. Swan has lost it. Here's Christensen. And Swan finally makes the save. Good play, though. Victor Petroni saw the opportunity, came forward. And a big chance there for the Kalamazoo Kangaroos and the Invaders hanging on. Again, that's the fourth time Victor's carried the ball over the red line. And all four times have been a just really opportune, opportune chances. Victor knows what he's doing out there when he carries that ball. Here's Mike Gow, plays it off to Christensen. Good play by Mark Christensen, beats his man. Down in the corner, Christensen still with the ball. And Mike Gow now wins it back for the Ruse. 2-1 down, 5.48 to go in this first half here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. Shot from Gow. He's going to come back, he's going to get a second chance. Mike Gow playing around with it, letting the players try and get some support. Plays it outside, oh, that's a poor pass. And away come the Invaders. Tony Wicker, what a good job by Wicker to win that ball back. An important play. Dave Pierce on the overlap for the Ruse. Pierce across the red line. Once again, waiting for some support. Tony Wicker inside. Here's Gout with a shot. It's going to come down to Wicker. And Wicker plays it to Pierce. Mike Garrett. And John Dolinsky faces him. His powers. The Ruse content to just play it around. Trying to get the line change. Here's Christensen. 4.54 remaining in the first half. 2-1 the score in favor of the Invaders. Here's O'Shea and Sanderson. Nice play by Ridgeway. Here's Sanderson. His shot blocked by Dolinsky. Sanderson again gets it back. Roos have had the ball for a good 30 seconds now. Here's Ridgeway. And Swanee comes out, makes the save. The shot comes back to Powers. Blocked away, and the invaders are hanging on. It's going to go all the way back to Petroni. The Ruse looking good, Mike. Yes, but a good play by Oscar Bazzano down there to clear the ball from Swan. He was definitely in trouble there. Sanderson tried to play the one-two with Joe Schmidt. Schmidt gets the pass back to Kevin Flynn. Sanderson trying to come off his man, Walt Schlotter. The Ruse trying to build something forward here. And forced back is Petroni. Anderson, a good header down by Anderson. And Canton get the ball back. The Roos really didn't make too much of that one. It's Flynn. Anderson, good shot, deflected wide. Schmidt gets it off to Sanderson. Sanderson beats Schlotter, tries to beat Ken Lolla, but Lolla gets it back. Sanderson going in hard on Walt Schlotter. Is Kia, good pass. And Ken Lala takes a down, Tony Johnson dive, nothing for that one, here's Ridgeway. Ridgeway on Anderson. Ridgeway still with the ball, pushed against the boards. Ridgeway battling with Tima, and Tima plays it well. Here's Kia, Invaders coming forward. Kia's got Lala inside, here's Lala. Oh, he should have done better. He got nothing on that shot. Can't give Kia that open field like that. He'll take it right down to the throat. Is Joe Schmidt trying to get in on this ball? Back to Kia. Yeah. Kia plays it off to Tim Tima. Yeah. Trevor Dawkins wants a line change for his invaders. PA announcer screaming, Canton, Canton. And the officials are called a timeout. Uh, timeout to Canton. Timeout to the invaders. Two minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this first half. Canton 2, the Kalamazoo Kangaroos 1 here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. Home opener for the Canton Invaders. The Roos home opener, November 16th against the Milwaukee Wave. Referee Terry Campbell getting ready to start the game again after a one minute official timeout. Have to be impressed by the player of LaRue's defense tonight. Again, Joe Schmidt seeing his first action of the game tonight. It really looks good. 
He's winning a lot of important tackles, which is you know very important for the for the Roos to get in on those tackles because the Invaders are a very hard team. They very they hustle. They won the, every ball, every pass they won, and that's the way. Man at the back, great play by Christensen. That was a superb interception by Christensen. And very important as well, here goes Powers and Pierce. Dave Pierce does the right thing, holds it up, tries to get it into Powers, and Art Kramer, the only one forward, is Kramer. And Mike Gout once again doing very well. Mike Gout doing good. The Roos looking good at this particular period. 2.23 to go in the first half. It's going to go out. We're going to get a kick into the ruse. It's a kick into the ruse. I think they're giving it to Can, Dave. I didn't see it that way. Well, we've been wrong before, Mike. Who went was that? Oh, I don't know, Dave. But we're also probably what 40, 50 feet from the field. I would say that. And, and that is a point you're trying to make there, Mike. Yeah, and the man, in the black socks, he's right down there on top of the play. Because last year it would have been the man in the yellow socks. I think they prefer the colour. For one, Victor Petroni would have clashed if the referees had kept the same uniform on. No, no, then we'd have a problem, Dave. That's right. Victor Petroni could be calling the plays. Here's Mark Christensen. Christensen tries to play it inside, intercepted by Killingsworth and Tobin. A minute 42. Dave, you haven't called Tony Wicker's number too much tonight, but Tony, again, there he is. He's playing a heck of a game on defense. He's the quiet man, but he gets the job done. You know, Tony Wicker's one of the play players you don't notice too much for the Roos, but he was their top player out in Chicago when the Roos won their first game 4-3, and he's playing a good, solid game tonight. Here's Petroni. He plays it out to Pierce. We've got a minute and 17 seconds to go. Dave Pierce, Christensen. The Roos looking very composed at this time. So does Canton, Dave. <laughs> Here's Pierce. Tries to get the shot in. Blocked by Dolinsky. We've talked a lot about the Kalamazoo defense, but Canton's only given up that one goal tonight, and that is the difference in the ballgame. Well, Mark Christensen winning the ball there. He was called for a foul to find out what's going on down there tonight. Don Tobin trying to get the shot. And Killingsworth in there, but couldn't do anything with it. 44 seconds remaining. Kramer. Here is our Kramer. Good block by Victor Petroni. What an important difference Victor Petroni has made to this team. I can't emphasize enough that. Garrett still with the ball. And Tony Wicker with a shot. Deflected up and it goes wide. Going to get a kick into the Canton Invaders. 16 seconds remaining. Kick into the Ruse. They're giving this one to the Ruse, Dave. No, they're giving it to Canton. No, they're giving it to the Ruse. They're both pointing down there, Dave. They're giving it to the Ruse. We've got 16 seconds. Time enough for one rush. We have what, 16 seconds on one clock and 17 seconds on the other. I think Chris is just soon have just the 16 seconds. I think we'll take the 16 as well. 2-1, the Invaders leading. Just over the head of Nick O'Shea. And Keir tries to get it down the line to Ken Lawler. Does so, intercepted by Flynn. Flynn loses out to Tim Teamer. He's having a good game for Canton tonight. Three seconds to go. And we'll come to the end of the first period with the Kalamazoo Kangaroos down by two goals to one. Mike Price and the Invaders leading 2-1, and the Invaders certainly controlled the play for this first period, but as the game went on, the Roos are coming back. A uh, very enjoyable first half. I think Chris Bartels would like to relive that first 21 seconds of the game where Canton goes down and R. Kramer scores his second goal of the season. Other than that, though, the Roos have played dead even with the Canton Invaders, and I think that's a good sign here in front of the big crowd in the home opener for Canton. The Roos power play defense almost working that time. They conceded that goal by the Invaders, but the defense is holding out and looking good tonight. Well, I know that's the key, and Chris knows that's the key. Uh, there's a lot of people fighting for just a few spots in that defense. Uh, Paul Cato, he's done good tonight, a couple spot minutes. Joe Schmidt, his first game. You know, we've, we've went over those names over and over again, but those are the men that are doing the work in the trenches. The offense, not clicking right now, but second half, hopefully that'll turn right around for him. Well, Neil Ridgeway's goal, his first of the season, 
Bill Kalamazoo back in the game. And as we go into the second half here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio, the score, the Canton Invaders 2, the Kalamazoo Kangaroos 1. Getting ready for the beginning of the second half. AIA action here on Kalamazoo Channel 5. Professional indoor soccer on the road and at home with the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. 2-1, they're down at the moment against the Canton Invaders. Goal scoring, Art Kramer from Oscar Pisano after 21 seconds in the first period. 3.13 into the second period. Slot out from Tobin and Ridgeway from O'Shea in the second period. Brought Kalamazoo back into it. And they gave it to Pierce originally, but they have changed it to Joe O'Shea, and that's justifiable. He was the one that set it up from the right side. Here goes Gard. Plays it off. Gets it back from Powers. His shot blocked. It's going to come back to Mike Gard. Here's Pierce. Followed, and he's being watched by Don Tobin. The opposite number sevens have been working, battling forward with each other all night. Here's Powers. Powers gets the turn. Oh, nice play by Ted Powers. Trying to get the shot off. It will come back to Garrett. And Garrett off the boards. And here's Mike Garrett now. Oh, and he almost just couldn't turn. Oscar Bazzano clears it for Canton. Bazzano just standing there and saying, hey, I've got this under control. And Victor's saying the same thing at the other end, Dave. Here's Mike Garrett. One minute into the beginning of the third period. Dave Pierce. Pierce gets it back off the boards and Powell's almost in there, but Pisano and Schwann are covering. An exciting game, Mark. I think it's just a very, very exciting game. Here's Killingsworth. Killingsworth takes a shot, blocked by Wicker. Picked up by Petroni. Mike Garrett calling for the ball. He'll get it off to Christensen. To Garrett. Who's trying to control the play? Here's Mike Garrett. Blocked by Don Tobin. Tobin's tackle, feet first. Roos need this next goal. We can't go down two to one. I mean three to one, Dave. Roos looking as if they won this goal here. Oh, and almost intercepted now. Here's Kramer. Great block Tony by Tony Wicker. Wicker. Oh, my word. What superb play by Wicker. You won't Absolutely see, brilliant. You won't see Victor out of position that bad anymore than he was right then, and Tony Wicker saved him on that one. I think Victor owes Tony a dinner. Now, Victor... I'm sure Tony will hold him to that one as well. Great play by Tony Wicker. Mike Gibbons in a chance. Gibbons on the break for the ruse. Good play by Gibbons and the shot. Comes back in again and blocked by Oscar Pisano. But the ruse from one end to the other. Kevin Flynn with a shot. It's going to come out to Walsh Schlotthauer. 12.41 remaining in the third period. Still marveling at Tony Wicker's very important save. Free kick against the ruse. First foul of this third period, Dave. So far, the two-minute rule has not come into operation yet. Victor Petroni in the goal. Backup goalie this year for the Roos, of course, is Scott Brenner, and we couldn't ask for a better backup for the Roos this year. No, Chris says Scott, he had a great training and he had a real hard off-season, so Chris is sitting really good in goal this year. Very important for Scott Brenner. He had a very good off-season and is capable of filling in any time that. Chris Bartels wants him to. Schmidt O'Shea back on the defense that time. O'Shea with his first point of the season. Almost a good ball, but intercepted by uh, Walsh Slodhauer. Just about as high as you could possibly go. Good opportunity here for Kalamazoo. They've got the ball deep in the uh, Canton end. Ridgeway. This is Kevin Flynn. Flynn with a shot. Blocked up. Comes down to Lala. Schmidt. Nice knock on by Joe Schmidt to Nick O'Shea. O'Shea trying to control the play. He's been held by Kia. You don't argue with Nick O'Shea. Kia's just so small. He, Nick O'Shea would just knock him away. 11 minutes, 34 seconds to go in the third period. 2-1. The Invaders still leading.
Tima and Schlotthauer doing the job on defense for Canton today. Oh, poor play by Swanner. Here comes Sanderson. Great save. O'Shea. And Swanner didn't know what hit him. He was just in the right place as the ball hit his face. Comes back and Swanner makes the save. Very lucky there. And here comes Kia. And Victor Petroni, no doubt about that one at all. Here's Kevin Flynn. Four minutes into this half. Almost uh, pass out to Ridgeway, intercepted. Good overrun by, on the overlap, Lala. Ball comes all the way out to Tima. Tima now tries to get his shot in. Kia. And that hit Kia. He's really. down, Kia is down. Ridgeway challenging with slot half of this one. Well, Kia's back up again as soon as he gets the ball. Here's Lala. Lala forced back to John Dolinsky at the red line. Tima. Canton trying to get that line change. Here's Sanderson. And Petroni makes the clearance. Good block. Good shot by Dolinsky and blocked. Canton trying to get the upper hand at this time. A very, very close game here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. 2-1, the Invaders leading in front of a home crowd. As yet, we have not heard their attendance. Good save from Petroni. My word, he looks good. Ridgeway tried to get it off to Sanderson. Here's Pisano. Pisano trying to go all the way. Still with the ball. Joe Schmidt trying to get the block on. Good shot and scores. It's Art Kramer. Art Kramer makes it 3-1 for the Invaders. Oscar Bizzano set that one up for Ken. He took the ball at the top of the square and banged it off the boards. Once that rebound got past Victor, he was helpless, and the shot went underneath his name. Game Kramer with his second goal. Kramer with his second goal with 5.46 to go. 5.14 into the third period, and the Canton Invaders lead it by three goals to one. That was a big goal, Dave. It's the type of goal that's going to inspire the Roos to get back in this one again. Played off. Here's Ted Powers. Nice play by Powers. Good shot. Comes out to Mike Garrett. Garrett trying to control the play. Gets it off to Wicker. Tony Wicker. Dave Pierce and Garrett. We're going to get a free kick to the Roos. The referee's giving it to the Invaders. And here's Kramer again, intercepted by Christensen. And here comes Mike Garrett. But his pass, intercepted by Ken Killingsworth. Ruse getting a little sloppy now, Dave. Pisano and Kramer working well again. Pisano getting his second assist, Kramer getting his second goal for the Invaders. And don't forget, Dave, Pisano was the league's outstanding defender a year ago. Uh, led the league in block shots. Today, he's been a force offensively with two assists. Christensen battling away with Ken Lala. Tobin plays it inside. Tony Wicker does a good job to get that one clear. Here's Lala. And intercepted by Mike Gout. Away goes Dave Pierce. Dave Pierce wanted the ball played early. Comes out to Christensen. Christensen with a shot. Sends that one high into the stands at the back. Yeah, that one got away, Dave. Uh, watch Kia next time he comes down. Tony Wicker's got him like a blanket. Tony Wicker, I think, is going to be wearing the number 19 of Kia's old Golzarian tonight. Waiting for the attendance tonight, and the place holds 4,070. So we're going to wait for the attendance. Well, somehow 4,119 fitted in here in a place that holds 4,070. Canton Invaders set the AISA record. That is the announced crowd. We're waiting for the official crowd, of course. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> Here's Mike Gibbons. Joe Schmidt in now as well. Can Schmidt get it off to Gibbons? Well, we got a break, Dave. That 4,118, quite a crowd in a place that holds 3,600. <laughs> uh, I got to think we're going to go for 6,000 next week at Wings. Well, I'm just a little unsure as how they got that figure. Um, the fire marshal's going to have something to say. It's near Ridgeway. Well, I think it's too late for them to stop this game, Dave. We got to go out and win it by ourselves. That's right. We being the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. Eight minutes and two seconds remaining in the game. Lala. He's clear, good stop by Petroni. Well, Victor Petroni's doing all he can out there. 
Kevin Flynn bringing it forward. He's got to hold it back. Gibbons. Gibbons pushes it back to O'Shea. O'Shea down the line to Flynn. Battling with Tima. Tima gets it off to number five, wearing the shirt number five for the Canton Invaders, Walt Schlotthauer. Joe Schmidt back on the red line. We'll wait for the official attendance before we make any comments there, Mike. <laughs> we do have the official attendance, Dave. It is 4,118, a new AISA record. Gibbons to Flynn. Flynn taken down, O'Shea. And away come the Invaders, two on one break. Oh, Joe Schmidt, just a perfect tackle. Ridgeway. Ridgeway and Schlotthauer getting involved in something. Dave, I don't know if this is good news or bad news, but Canton is 5-0 and playing before home crowds of over 3,000. Well, nobody, nobody's ever had a 4,000 crowd. Right? All right, we're in, a new, we're in a new category now. I guess this one gets the asterisk. Well, we, Tom Saladig, our cameraman standing here, when the attendance was announced, he almost couldn't believe it. Christensen doing a good job to stop that one. The Roos have got to come back and get a hold of this game. As Mike said earlier on, they've got to go out and win it for themselves. And Dave Pierce. Out on the far side, Mike Garrett. Garrett takes him on, gets it back again. Here's Kia. Kia gets it off. Chance now for Anderson. Hits the bar at the back of the goal and comes out. And it's still 3 1. We'll talk about that attendance between periods, Dave. Here's Tony Wicker. To Sanderson. Back to Mike Garrett. The Ruse trying to get off a shot. 5.27 remaining in the third period. They're down by 3 to 1. They need a goal before they go in at the end of this period. Long ball played for to Art Kramer. Danger now as the Canton Invaders on the break. But no danger in the end, as it turns out. Here's Sanderson. Pierce. Off the boards, but Swana makes a save. Killingsworth. Canton's ball. They're carrying play right now. Once again, we get another official timeout. 4.37 to go in the third period. Oh, we got a break, Dave. I'd like to, again, emphasize that attendance. That's a new record uh, for the AISA. Breaks the old record set at Columbus last year of 3,919 set uh, in a game last year between Chicago and Columbus. Uh, they, list the atten they list the capacity of this place of only 4,070. So somewhere we've got 40 people standing, and uh, I hate and to point it out, Dave, but there's 40 empty seats down there that I'm sure they can be more than welcome to. Well, you know, there's a great crowd here, and we've got to praise Canton for all the work that's gone into this crowd, but um, there's, there's a few empty seats here, and if the capacity is 4,070, it doesn't take a mathematician to work out that there cannot be 4,118 people in this stadium tonight. But Dave, you, you hit it right in the head. Uh, this is a, a nice facility, and they've done a heck of a job marketing this thing. Tom uh, Slatter, you're just showing Tom's a few of the got empty a good shot there. of the empty seats, and I wish those people that are standing would go down there and take a look at those seats. They're not bad seats. Uh, but all in all, it is a really big crowd. Brent Bowen, the public relations for the Canton Invaders last season, came down and he's visiting the team this year. And he came up to the press box and did say this is the largest crowd that he's ever seen up here. So things are looking up in Canton and uh, richly deserved. They are the AISA champions from a year ago. And I think it's deserved that they get a you know, full house for opening night. Hope okay. Kalamazoo can do the same thing. Well, of course, it also looks good for the league, Mike, when you get a lot of people at your game. It doesn't matter how many you say there are. It's the amount of people that are here and how they support the team. And we've got to congratulate the Canton Invaders for bringing a lot of people out here. Looks good for the league and looks good for them at their home opener. Here's Joe Schmidt. Oh, great play. 
Good play by Schmidt. Here comes Ridgeway. Pass running in on the blind side of Oscar Pisano. But Ridgeway couldn't get the pass in. Here's O'Shea. Teddy Pass has been very heavily marked tonight. Back to Kevin Flynn. You know, when the officials call a timeout like that, Mike, it loses a lot of momentum in the game, and I'm not exactly sure why they do it. Well, I, yeah, I understand what you're saying, Dave, but I think that was a good timeout for the Roos. Uh, things were getting a little out of hand. Uh, Canton had four or five wide open chances. I think Chris Bartels was just as happy to take about a one minute break and get his troops back in line. It also works against you as well, of course, as we've said, when the, uh, you know, when the Roos have got the momentum. Maybe it's a rule that should not be in, the, in there in the first place. Hopefully it won't be a factor in the game this year. Uh, but I'm sure the, there's justification for the officials' timeout. And like I said, we just hope it won't be a factor in the game this year. Here's O'Shea. O'Shea hits Killingsworth and it goes way out. Going to get a kick in to the Ruse. Killingsworth looks a little dazed after taking that shot. It's Joe Schmidt with a shot. Oh, my word, he blasted that one over the top. Seeing Killingsworth get hit on the head like that, it reminds me of a game last year we saw in the MISL. Uh, Carl Heinz Granitza labeled Scott Manning of the Baltimore Blast, nailed him from point blank range, and Scott was carried off the field, Dave. Well, that's the way to go. Those, those uh, shots can really come in very hard, as you say, Mike. Well, the Canton Invader looking sort of like Darth Vader's waving around some sort of plastic stick. He's wearing a velour black outfit, and he's trying to get the crowd inspired here. I must admit, um, King Roo could tell him a few things about costume style. And of course, I don't mean to imply in any way that King Roo is the old-fashioned trendsetter here. That's an offside pass. Three lines, the ball goes over to Kalamazoo. We've got 337 to go, or 336, depending on which clock you look at here at the Canton Auditorium. <laughs> Mike Garrett is hovering over the ball. He's got Christensen and Wicker to either side. Mike Gibbons and Dave Pierce. Chris Bartel's doing a bit of line changing and line switching. And Swanner gets the ball back. And away goes Kia Zolganian. Plays it off the boards to Victor Petroni. Dave Pierce gets the better. On the right inside! Yes! Mike Gibbons! Mike Gibbons scores the goal for the Ruse. It's 3-2, and in the right place at the right time. It's 3-2, Mike Gibbons from that's, Dave Pierce. That's Gibby's first goal of the season, and it's got to bring back memories of last year's playoff game when he had a hat trick in one of the four games. He likes playing against this Canton team. Gibbons from Pierce makes it 3-2. And the Roos once again pulled to within a goal. They've now got to go and take the game to the Canton Invaders. Yeah, Dave, we've got a ball game. We've got a ball game. This really is something special. Well, the invaders sort of gone into a little hideaway place. I don't know where invaders hide. Like, do they have invader caves or something? I have to ask where King Roo hides as well. If you know the secret location of King Roo, send your name and address on a postcard too. We're going to get a free kick to the Roos now. Three minutes and three seconds remaining. In this third quarter, third of four quarters, AISA action on Kalamazoo Channel 5, your sports station in Kalamazoo, for live indoor soccer action with the professional Kalamazoo Kangaroos. And I said that without taking a breath. Away come the invaders. His pass inside and Victor Petroni making the save. We to Dave Pierce. We haven't seen Victor come out with it like he did last week against Chicago. I don't think there's been too many opportunities for him to do that. That ball's staying this way, Dave. Mike Gibbons on the attack again. Kick in. It looks like Dave Pierce is going to take it. This certainly has been a very, very closely fought game. In the other games, we've seen scores of 16-9 and 7-5. And the two the game the Kalamazoo Kangaroos have been involved in, defensive battles, 4-3. They won away to Chicago, and now 3-2, they're down here against the Invaders. Trying to spoil a home celebrations for Trevor Dawkins' team. Here's Wicker. Crowd has been quite a quiet day for as large as it is. This they haven't really gotten a chance to get in the ball game. Must be Chicago. Well, Victor Petroni caught way out, and Kia scores. 
And Victor Petroni caught way out of his goal in no man's land. And Kia there for the rebound. And what a nice goal by Kia. That's a very quick goal. Very swift. And that wakes up the crowd. No sooner did I say it was a dead crowd here in Canada when they come to life. I guess they let me know they are here tonight. Kia gets his first goal of the night, and it's 4 2. And really, that was a mistake on the part of the defense of the Kalamazoo Kangaroos, just as though they got back in the game. And they're going to face an uphill struggle now, but they've got the composure to do it. Pisano, that's probably inspired the Canton Invaders. And the Roos have got to keep their heads up. Good stop by Kevin Flynn. Derek Sanderson going forward for the Roos. With Flynn on the overlap, inside to Ridgeway. And that's going to come back to Joe Schmidt. Good tackle by Tobin, and away come the Invaders again. Kramer. Intercepted by Joe Schmidt. Again, battling right across the goal. What a superb tackle by Nick O'Shea. Shot goes wide, and away comes Ridgeway. What a game we've got here in Canton tonight. Victor dodged a bullet there, Dave. Well, the Invaders had a good chance to make it 5-2, and the Kamzu defense holding on. Here's O'Shea. 4-2, the Invaders leading. O'Shea! Oh, couldn't get it through. Good stop by Dolinsky. And Joe Schmidt, the only man back. And danger now for the Ruse. Oh, and Kevin Flynn doing a superlative job. Here's Killingsworth. Back to Tobin. Kramer trying to get the ball down. 45 seconds remaining in this third period. Killingsworth. Good stop by Joe Schmidt. Here's Sanderson. Plays it off to Ridgeway. Ridgeway with the ball. He's brought down by Killingsworth. Thirty-four seconds to go, Dave. I'd like to see the Ruse get one more on the board. Kevin Flynn, off the boards, we're going to get a kick into the ruse. Half a minute remaining in this third period. A very close game, the ruse need a goal now. O'Shea, right off the board, Swanee. Almost couldn't get that one, Jamie Swanner. Back to Schmidt, Schmidt plays it off to Ridgeway. Ridgeway, controlling the play, gets it back to Kevin Flynn. Flynn inside to Joe Schmid, and Kevin Flynn again, holding off the challenge well. I've got 12 seconds to get off a shot. Here's Joe Schmidt. Seven seconds for the Ruse to get off a shot. It's going to come loose to Dolinsky. And Dolinsky will play the period out. And the Ruse go down 4-2 at the end of the third period. Just 15 minutes remaining in the game. The beginning of the fourth and final quarter of indoor soccer action from the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio. The Roos are down by four games to two, their second game in this second season in the AISA. Four goals to two, I should say, Dan. And underway with action in the second quarter. I beg your pardon, in the fourth quarter. Mike Pryson, Dave Pye with you. Mike. 4-2 the score. Mark Christensen brings the ball forward to Nick O'Shea. Mike, I should mention, of course, that you're no rookie at this indoor soccer business. I've seen a game or two in my day, Dave. Covers the ruse for the Kalamazoo Gazette. Christensen plays it off to Petroni. Well, the ruse certainly needs some offense in this period. He's got six goals on the season so far. And need at least three to take home a victory back to Kalamazoo. But I've got to figure I'm look we're looking at two of the best teams in the IASA. 
Wicker, handball by Tima. No, the referee didn't call anything, didn't see it. Maybe I was just being a little bit judgmental there. Away comes Lala. He's had a good game tonight. Anderson inside. Tony Wicker blocks that one again. Is Dave Pierce. Stops the play. Mike Gowd on the overlap, but beaten by Anderson. Schladhauer trying to get a shot in inside. Good save from Victor Petroni. Here comes Mike Gowett. Well, Gowett trying to get his shot off, blocked off by Tima. Free, well, we're going to get a free kick to the ruse. Oh, it's going well, again. I don't believe it. That's a rather strange decision by the bearded referee down there on the field. Yeah, Tima was pushing Mike Garrett around pretty good down in the corner. Mike tried to draw the call with the ref let the play go on. Nico Shea battling. And the ball is going to come loose to Mike Gibbons. Anderson. He looked very steady tonight, Ian Anderson, for the Canton Invaders. Yes, he hasn't been involved in any of the scoring, but nevertheless, he's definitely held his own out there and showed that he's a class ball player. It's Tobin. Tobin's shot. Well, he placed that shot in the inside of the post and it came back out again. Here's Garrett to Gibbons. Gibbons back to Joe Schmidt as the Roos try to get that line change. Kalamazoo's been very defensive-minded here in the second half. They've got to take some chances if they're going to get back in this one. Well, you know, they got it back to 3-2. They had the momentum, the mistake, and then the Invaders score. It's an uphill struggle, but the Roos are quite capable of coming back in this one here. Here's Ridgeway. Takes on Tobin, gets a shot in, and Jamie Swanner makes the save. O'Shea challenging Pisano. Away comes Oscar Pisano. Pisano allowed to go all the way. And he goes tripping down after a tackle with Joe Schmidt. Here's Pisano now. He gets it off to Dolinsky. Canton pushed back by the Ruse defence, but of course Canton have got the time. They're not marking Pisano, and he's got two assists tonight, but yet he's still being allowed to roam free inside the Ruse zone. The cameraman and technical director this evening, Tom Salati. Yes, he will be for all of his broadcasts this evening. All of his broadcasts this season. I think we only get in one broadcast tonight, Dave. But as Ernie Banks used to say, hey, let's play two. Oscar Pisano trying to work things out on defense for the Canton Invaders. Away they come now. Dolinsky. Dolinsky, Killingsworth, totally unmarked on the defense. He just couldn't stick a foot out to get that shot in. Blocked over, and we're going to get a kick in for Victor Petroni. Well, I know the Ruse don't want to start thinking about next year after this game tonight, but right now it looks a lot like last year's playoff season. Uh, they're playing even with Canton, yet they're just coming up short. The Roos have played 12 games last year with Canton, yet they've only won twice. This is the 13th game of the series, and quite a rivalry it's starting to be. This is a lot closer than some of the other league meetings that the Roos and the Canton Invaders had had. I think that shows how far along Kalamazoo's come, though, in just a year. I think the addition of Victor, again, we've talked about it all night. Victor and a couple of key defensemen. Kalamazoo's going to be in every game this year, I think. And they're certainly in this one. Here's Mike Garrett. Anderson clears things up. Gout makes the play. Sanderson couldn't get a hard enough shot to face Jamie Swanner, and the invaders have come forward. 10 minutes, 56 seconds remaining in this game. 4-2. The Roos leading. Tim Tima makes a bad pass. Let's in the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. Here's Sanderson. Mike Garrett. Oh, nice play. Can Sanderson get in? Mark Christensen saw the opportunity. Nice pass by Christensen. Swanners looked really tough in goal for Can tonight. Goodness me, the referee almost gave a free kick to the Canton Invaders, and it was a. I heard Tony yell all the way up here, and I think that's the first time I've heard Tony say anything in a game in two years. The referee's trying to get his act together. He's still learning at 10:29 to go in the game. That yeah, could be his old home opener, also, Dave. It's showing. Here's Sanderson. Sanderson overruns the ball. Kia. Anderson again gets it back to, to 
to Schlotthaus, going to try a shot. Ball comes back, and Anderson. No doubt about it, 5-2. Talked about Ian Anderson. He's played a real steady game in there. He hasn't been involved in the scoring up to now, but that's a big one. We're Bruce down 5-2. And Ian Anderson may have put a nail, the first nail in the coffin. There's 10.08 to go, plenty of time for the Ruse. Just what the Ruse didn't want to happen. It's difficult enough to come back when you want goal down down here in Canton, but when you're three, they've got a real uphill struggle to go. But I don't see any of the 4,100 leaving quite yet. Don't see any of the 3,500 leaving. Here's Flynn. Flynn gets it off to Powers. O'Shea. Swanner comes out. Well, my word, Jamie Swanner does a bit of acrobatics there, but goodness knows what he was hoping to achieve. He got away with one there, I think, Dave. He was well out of position again. He's made a couple of mistakes, but the Ruse haven't been able to capitalize. Nine minutes, 35 seconds left in the game. The Ruse down. Five goals to two. Dolinsky, shot goes wide. Kramer sends that one up and over into the back. And as Tom Slaghi says, the Ruse need a quick goal. Ruse are playing tough, Dave, but two goals isn't going to win an indoor soccer game, especially in this league. Here's Pisano. Kramer. Back to Pisano. To Kramer again. Good tackle by Kevin Flynn. You know, when the Roos make those tackles, they've got to have the players running up in support quickly enough because a good tackle is a good tackle, but if you can't do anything with it after that, it just stops the other team without enabling the attacking team to score. Eight minutes, 49 seconds remaining in the game. 5-2, Canton in the lead. Paul Cato out on the floor for Kalamazoo. I haven't seen him out yet this half. I think Chris is trying to get a couple of fresh legs out there. It's been a long game. Which way, his shot blocked. Good play by Cato. And Flynn getting in. Nice play by the Roos there. Ridgeway shot hitting the legs of Don Tobin. Nice pass by Tobin out to Kramer. Dolinsky. Dolinsky taking on Powers. Killingsworth gets it back to Dolinsky. And intercepted by Paul Cato. And away come the Roos. Ridgeway into Powers. Powers shot! And Jamie Swanner makes the save. Joe Schmidt, once again, an excellent tackle by Joe Schmidt. And his shot blocked again. It'll come back to Powers. Powers gets it into Schmidt. Schmidt to Powers. Nice shot by Teddy Powers. A good save by Jamie Swanner. Here's Paul Cato trying to get in. And Jamie Swanner kicks it away. And the Ruse with the pressure at the moment. 7.55 to go. Ruse changing lines, Dave. They need something right now. Mike Gatt hovering over the ball, 7.55 to go. 5-2, the Invaders leading. Blue's second day ISA game. Garrett Gibbons Gatt. and Pierce. Christensen with a shot, blocked by team, and away goes Kia, and away goes Kia on a one-on-one. -on -one. And Kia, what a superb goal. Oh, I say that was absolutely superbly taken. No doubt about it, 6-2. And a very, very, very good goal by the Canton Invaders from defense onto attack, one on one, and Kia nails it. Kia showing everybody tonight why he led this team in scoring last year, why he finished third in the league last year in scoring. Kia can make things happen out there. He's one exciting ball player. Chris Bartels calling a timeout. And after 3-2, it all seems to collapse on the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. Three unanswered goals by the Invaders. 
It seems to go that way a lot down here in Canton. Can't fault, you can't fault Victor Petroni for that either. Uh, it was a one-on-one -on -one Kia, a star offensive player in this league. Victor just got caught a little bit too far out of the net maybe on that. You go back, you know, when you look at, back at the game and you think you had a chance, you were in it a 3-2 scoring the goal. You had the momentum and that fourth goal, a real killer for the Roos and Trevor Dawkins down there with his Canton team and Chris Bartels trying to inspire the Roos. They need some goals now. We've got the wave going in Canton. I've never seen a wave at an indoor soccer game here in this league. Well, all these people here, at least three and a half thousand of them jumping up and down doing the wave. And that inspires your team. The wait till they open and game at Wing Stadium when they have a wave there. Boy, do they have a wave. The Canton Civic Center alive with indoor soccer action. And it's the hometown Canton Invaders who are winning the attendance, they're winning the wave, and they're winning the game. And I think, I know, the game is far, far more important. What can the Roos do now? 6-2, they can't give up, and I'm sure they won't. Mark Christensen, center field with the ball out to Tony Wicker. Christensen. Teddy Powers back to Christensen again, halfway through the fourth and final period. Tim Teamer doing a very good job of marking the defense. Christensen lets that one go, and away come the invaders again. There was Anderson and Kia teaming up on that steal. They're carrying this fourth quarter for the invaders. No doubt about it, Dave. Seven minutes to go. Certainly a loud crowd here at the Canton Civic Center. When you get as many people as you have in here in this small arena, it certainly sounds very, very loud. And it gets very, very hot up in the press box, Dave. The ball is going to come to Ian Anderson. And then out to Goward again, but Anderson gets his pass off. And Slothauer hard in the tackle, wins that one. Can Lola free, here's Kia, and Lola. And Kia will try and get the shot in, but cleared away by the Roos. And Teddy Powers tries to go for the one-on-one, -on -one. here we go, Powers. Powers, great pass by Powers, oh, that was brilliant. Pierce goes down, but that was a superb pass by Teddy Powers. Here's Dave Pierce. 6.14 to go. Canton, six, Kalamazoo, two, Garrett. Garrett pushed on by Kia. The Roos need every chance they can get now, Mike. Just 6.07 to go, we're down four goals. Uphill struggle now. Boy, that was a beautiful play by Teddy Powers to Dave Pierce. A finish there sure would have looked good on the scoreboard. Mark Christensen. Plays it safely back to Petroni. Petroni up to Wicker. Wicker plays it in to Anderson, and now danger now for the Roos. Schlotthauer gets it off on the far side to Ken Lala. Marked by Christensen. Killingsworth is back. And the Roos getting back in numbers, but they're trying to win the ball from the invaders. Pisano, center field, lets it go under his foot. Joe Schmidt coming on as the Roos will make a line change. 5.37 to go in the game. 6-2, the invaders leading. Not a friendly place to be making a comeback. Joe Schmidt has played a good game tonight in his first game of indoor soccer here for the Roos. Petroni judged that one just right. Mike Gibbons. Bringing down the Canton attacker. Five minutes remaining. Cato trying to get in on the action as well. 
Schmidt. He's got to get back for this one. One by R. Kramer. And his pass easily intercepted by goalkeeper Victor Petroni. And away comes Paul Cato. Cato inside to Gibbons. Gibbons is trying to get off a shot. Blocked by Pisano. Gibbons still with the ball. Back to Cato. Oh, he hit the post. How unlucky for Paul Cato. Nice shot. And the shot from Ridgeway goes wide. 4.22 remaining in the game. And the Roos have certainly come close on a couple of occasions in this quarter. Gibbons plays the 1-2 to Flynn. Cato winning the tackle. Good play by Cato, but Don Torwin will bring it forward. Out to Killingsworth. Four minutes to go in the game. Here's Dolinsky. Oh, nice pass out to Tobin. Canton stringing together some nice moves at the moment. Pisano. Here's Oscar Pisano. He's going to try a shot back off the boards. Flynn, Cato. Paul Cato looking good tonight. Tries to weave the pass through the defense. Doesn't quite work for him. Six two, here's Tobin. Tobin shot, that goes well wide. It's gonna come back off to Kiers Lagarnian. Three seventeen remaining in the game. Flynn. Ridgeway. Well another couple of goals would look good here, mate. About four. And the officials have called a timeout. Chris Bartels has called a timeout. Yeah, Chris has got to rally the troops for one last three minutes of all-out offense, I guess, Dave. Uh, it's two goals tonight. I'm sure Chris is a little bit disappointed in his output, but again, the defense has played well enough to win. Uh, the goals Victor's given up. Uh, any goaltender in the league would have given up tonight. Interesting move by Chris Bartels, the coach of the Kalamazoo Kangaroos. Three minutes and three seconds to go. And Nick O'Shea will come on in goal for the Roos as the sixth attacker. Surprise, he showed, a little bit of surprise that he chose Nick. Uh, Dave Pierce held the same sixth attacker role for Columbus a year ago before being traded to Kalamazoo. Well, the Roos need every bit of backup they can get. Here comes O'Shea, 251. Off to Cato. Can Cato get off a shot? Yes, he can. Pierce. Garrett back to Cato again. He's got O'Shea back. And Mike Gatt gets in right across there. Mike Gatt, nice header back. Here's Powers. Powers with a shot. Blocked by Oscar Pisano. Comes back to Powers. He's going to take another one. Hits the post. Powers, yes. It's there. 6 3. Oscar Pisano is down at the center line. Right at the top of the box. Well, the six attacker worked at that particular point there, Mike. Yeah, now can they work the magic about three more times in the next 221. And Pisano's still down. They're working on him down there right at the top of the box. And I don't think Can would like to play this last two minutes without their number one defender. Um, yeah, I, I can assist with that fix. Yes. Okay. You're right. You're right. I want that sheet. Oh, no! No! He's getting it. Dave Pierce getting the assist on the goal. I'm not talking now. Nick O'Shea 
That's a six attacker for the Roos. Here's Neil Ridgeway. Ridgeway gets a shot off. Swan, Swan makes the save. Two minutes to go. 6 3. The Roos are down with a six attacker on. Canton yet to get a shot off on Nick O'Shea. Notice that Pisano's not out there right now. He must be a little bit shaken up. They're working on him down at the bench right now. Maybe they think they can afford to do without him at this particular time. O'Shea, nice play. Out to Ridgeway. Oh, and here's danger. Art Kramer going for his third goal. Great save from Nick O'Shea. Oh, my word, he came up with a big one. Art Kramer looking for his third goal. I goodness think, me, he really could. I think, Art should have pulled the, I think Kramer should have pulled the trigger just a little bit sooner. He let Nick get down there in position, and Nick took care of it. Nick O'Shea making a good save. One minute, 13 seconds to go. The Roos are getting a, trying to get a few more in. Here's Mike Garrett. And Tima wins this one. All the way back, three-line pass, offsides. One minute, three seconds to go. Three and a half thousand people getting ready to go home after seeing an exciting game. Here's Pierce. Off the boards, it's going to come to Kramer. It's going to go all the way back. And here's Ridgeway. 6 3, the Invaders leading. The Roos' second AISA game of the season here down at the Civic Center in Canton. Pierce and Powers inside the penalty area. Ball comes back out, as far as Don Tobin. And away comes Dolinsky and Schlothauer. Here's Tobin, 32 seconds to go. Canton content here just to run out the clock if they can. Pierce wins this one. Twice, and away comes Mike Garrett. Team of the only man back. And Garrett, oh, what a nice play by Mike Garrett. His shot tipped wide. Almost a score for the Roos, his powers. Mike Garrett trying to weave his way in. Eight seconds to go. They're counting down here in Canton. The 4100 are on their feet. That's and it. And that's it. The Invaders in front of about 3,500 people here at the Civic Center in Canton, Ohio, win the game, the final score. The Canton Invaders, six. The Kalamazoo Kangaroos three in what was a very, very close game up until the Roos went 4-2 down, and even then the Roos stayed in it. Yeah, Kia came back to haunt him. He scored two big goals for him, put the game out of reach. Canton Invaders going round doing their thing. Led by their invader, they win 6 3. 